note that uh, interacting with interacting with um, with APIs like uh, like Moodle is equally trivial. There's, there's 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 no complexity associated with it. The only thing you have to do is you go out there and figure out exactly what sort of restful endpoint you have to work with, right? And 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 I told you for Moodle. <coughs> Uh, all you have to do is Google up Moodle API, and there's a slew of documentation. Stack Overflow is is flooded with questions and threads that are associated with how you get to process information um, when you're interacting with the Moodle API. If you go to the Moodle documentation, you notice that they, they are predefined, there's the details of the different endpoints. All you have to do as a group, when you're reading this documentation, you're doing document analysis, you identify the relevant, endpoints that you're going to be working with. Once you do that, you will then start experimenting with the different endpoints to interact with it, right? System interface analysis to see exactly what sort of response you get back when you send out a request. It's, it's not that hard. And also something to think about here is what you should be asking yourself if your group is working with Moodle. I don't know if you bother to ask yourselves, which Moodle, which Moodle instance are you going to be using for a test? Have you thought about this? Have you guys in installed a Moodle for your respective groups or something? If you don't want to answer then, uh, okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. That's something to think about, right? When you're doing these tests, especially if your tests involve like writing data to Moodle, things that will not allow you to work with the production uh, instance of Moodle, the one that we have currently available. The testing would have to be done using a sandbox, an experimental instance. So either your group installs Moodle, a Moodle instance of your own, or alternatively, fortunately for you, um, and you can easily install Moodle by the way, fortunately for you, you can, you can make use, you can just Google up, a lot of smart people have set up uh, Moodle test, in, test instances, and, and I do believe I've come across, um, I wonder if I remember Moodle, Moodle demos, demo API site. I've come across a Moodle dem, demo API site, uh, this, right? So if you're working with Moodle, as you're doing your system interface analysis, I do encourage your group to please go here. Please go here. Um, and, and, and then just try and figure out exactly how we go about in, interacting with that, uh, with that instance, right? What, what, you will, what you will realize, right, as you're working through the different instances is that, um, is that you, can, you can already start, start uh, playing around with, uh, so if you look at this, and I don't know if you are wasting time. I don't know, has any group looked into this, by the way? System interface analysis? Has any group not looked into this? I'm going to wait for, an, for a response because I think it would be nice if you guys uh, had some sort of response here. Those of you working on Moodle, have you, have you started interacting with the, have you started doing system interface analysis to try and uh, see how the API works? We looked, we looked at it just to understand it, but we haven't gone in depth. Okay. Yeah. What you'll notice that is it's, it's not that hard, right? So, I do encourage you, I still, as I sent through a link here, as you are thinking of setting up your own Moodle instance, you can use this sandbox, but the way this sandbox works, works is data is paged from the platform, um, I, I think in 24 hour cycles, right? So whatever test data you're going to put in there, you're going to have to repopulate it over and over again as you're doing your tests. But a simple technique is just to use one of these cloud service providers, right? Um, like, uh, uh, like what? Heroku or something, I think you can do that on Heroku and then just set up a Moodle instance that you can use as a test. 
Something else we can do is try and see if we can set up a test model instance on one of our servers. But please use this sandbox. Now, if you look at this sandbox, right, um, what you'll notice from Moodle when you're reading up on the API documentation, is that the, the very first thing you're going to have to do is authenticate yourself, right? And authentication, authenticating yourself is, is not that hard. Um, I guess you can take advantage of a platform like Carl. Uh, and I'm going to just, uh, I'm using these credentials that are here, by the way, in case you're wondering. I just want to show you how easy it is to do this. I'm going to use these, these uh, credentials here on this test, this test server instance of ours. Um, these credentials here. When you go to the test server, they will tell you that uh, for you to log into the sandbox, it doesn't, these are the credentials, right? So these are the credentials I'm using. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attempt to, first thing I need is I, I need to generate a token, right? Um, and I'm just using sandbox because the password here is sandbox, admin sandbox or student sandbox. student sandbox um, and then I am going to issue this endpoint here and what you notice from the documentation in Moodle is they'll tell you that uh, for you to get the token that you're going to use for your application, this is what you have to do, right? So there's nothing new here. I'm just doing what uh, what is specified in the documentation. And I have to do that, I guess. So if I run this in here, should be able to get back uh, a JSON response with a token. I don't know if you can see this. So using this, this token here that I've gotten back, I can then issue other requests, right? Request response. So I get back a response. Um, the next thing I, I have to do is, because there are certain, or as I was going to say, there, there, are, certain, there, are, certain, there are certain endpoints that require you to specify the user so there's there's a particular endpoint that you use for you to extract the user, but let's say I wanted to, to just get, um, if I just wanted to get course, courses in this Moodle instance, all I would have to do is um, go to the actual, use the RESTful API that, API endpoints that corresponds to um, CWF function, I guess that lets me to list the courses, but the only, the only thing I'd have to do is I'd have to specify the token, right? So what you notice from the documentation is that the process you go through for you to do this is slightly different, right? So you first of all specify the token, which we've just gotten right now. And then you specify the function, right? So this would be the endpoint that you want to access. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to see if we can access the, I hope this works, but we can access the core, the core courses. And I, I, I know some of these endpoints, by the way, because I have been playing around with Moodle for some time. There's some <clears throat> pet projects that we are, we are wanting to, to see if we can, we can, um, we can build or implement, right? Uh, then I would have the actual <coughs> RESTful API endpoint like so. Uh, and what you notice is that 
the vast majority of um, the vast majority of uh, web is it the vast majority of web services these days will typically by default they'll spit out the response in JSON format, right? So you, if you see this, this is the format that's coming through from course ID number number two there. Um, but but it's not uncommon to find uh, a web service that spits out information, let's say XML. It's one of the same thing. All of these things, all the different data formats have a predefined structure. And what you're doing is uh, you're processing the predefined structure yourself. So I can pipe this to see if we can, uh, I'm just going to uh, see if I can format this appropriately, right? So this is what you'd be doing, right? If you're working with Moodle, um, you can see that the course ID number two, right, has these details associated with it. Topic three, right, those topics you see in Moodle, depending on, on how the different sections, depending on how the different lecturers that you have organize their content in Moodle. Lighton does it different. I don't use topics, right? Is this making sense? The key thing here is the client server architecture, right? And the request response workflow. When you're interacting with an external service, you send a request, you get back a response, you process a response. You must make sure you're sending the correct request. How do you know you're sending the correct request? Documentation, 